Hey folks, today we're doing another Billy Strings video that's sponsored by the community. However, today's sponsor would like to remain anonymous. Mysterious, right? So if you would, please thank Anonymous down in the comments down below. And if you want to buy a transcription and sponsor a video just like Anonymous, all you have to do is go to LessonsWithMarcel.com, go over to the tab store, scroll to the bottom, you can fill out that form, shoot me a message. So right, let's talk about this video of Billy Strings and Marcus King playing I'm a Lonesome Fugitive. So normally I wouldn't do a video on a performance like this because I, I don't think that it's a normal part of either artist's you know, repertoire, their live show. Um, might be part of Marcus King's, but I don't know well enough to say. But this video has a lot of views. I'm sure a lot of us have seen it, so I figured, why not? So today we're just gonna be talking about the four guitar breaks that Billy plays. This is kind of a unique situation for Billy. We get to see what his guitar playing is like when he's not shredding it 300 BPMs. So to break all that down, let's do our normal process. We'll look at some big picture scales, arpeggios, licks, whatever it is. And then we'll go ahead and we'll look at the sheet music or the tab and we'll try to get into those specifics. And remember to go snag that free tab at LessonsWithMarcel.com. The link should be in the description down below. Now let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that we need are some G major and minor pentatonic shapes, and they're gonna be the basis for all of our note choice. Now, Billy, throughout this tune, adds in a lot of minor thirds and flat fifths into these scales, and we'll just tackle those as we go. These are the main scale shapes, though. Now normally just a couple shapes like that is enough. If you've seen any of these other how to play videos, that's normally all I need. But Billy does kind of a country thing in this video. He does this horizontal pentatonic scale to get up the neck. I like to call these big dipper shapes because each individual step looks like a little dipper constellation. Don't laugh at me. Use your imagination. You'll see it. Billy uses thirds on two different string sets. So the first example is on his high E string and his B string. And he goes down the neck using the major scale in thirds. We saw that in the dust in a baggy video. And now the other way he uses it is on his G string and his B string. And he does this chromatic piece of classic country language. Let's look at both of those. Okay, last thing. So we get a bunch of different variations of this one lick. Billy's normally doing it towards the end of all of these breaks. So get really familiar with this version, but know that we're gonna be changing it up. You're gonna see a bunch of different versions of it. Great, so let's take a second and let's listen to a performance of all four breaks and try to identify all of the things that we just talked about. Now this may seem like a boring step. I think some of you might be confused as to why I include this in all of my how to play videos, but it's important. I want you to be able to identify all of these core concepts so when you see them in other breaks that Billy plays, you'll remember, oh yeah, it's just that one thing. Yeah.
with all of that under our belts, let's get into those specifics and let's see if we can put all these things together into those four breaks. All right, cool. So here we are looking at the tab. In the beginning of Billy's first break, we have this phrase. So what's happening here is these are quarter note triplets. You can see that little uh, uh, tie there with the three. That's signifying that these are triplets. How do we count that? How do we feel it? Well, there isn't a great way to count it. Normally when people count triplets, they just say the word triplet. You'll get like triple, triple, triple. The important thing is that these feel even though. You can feel that in Billy's break, right? This is the sound you want to avoid. Right, that just sounds really amateurish. I'm not gonna get any more into counting triplets because there's lots of great videos that people have made about how to feel those things, how do you talk about them, and I'm, I'm just not gonna do it here in this video where I have so much other stuff to cover. So if we look into the next line, of course we have this triplet phrase. Now, luckily for this one, the triplet isn't really strict. You can actually feel it, it's just a slide up and down. And then this happens on beat two, so one, two, three. For, and that would be that whole measure for you, which is great. I like that, a little bit easier to talk about. Now, if we go on to the next measure, we have this. Now, if you wanna count this, you can see that beat one is actually a rest right here, right? There's a lot of interesting rhythmic things that are gonna happen in this tune. So with beat one being a rest, we have to feel one, two, three, four. And if we combine that with the next measure, we have this, one, The next measure isn't too bad. Once again, we have an empty slot in the first beat, and you can see that's actually a held over note. It's in parentheses. That's what I'm talking about there. If we started right on that measure right there, would be nothing there. We'd have one, two, three, four. Important to feel these counts and know what you're talking about. I don't want anyone to feel a little wishy-washy here. Cool, if we look at the next measure in the next line, we have this. Two, three, four. Um, at the end here, we have the lick that we talked about. This is the exact phrase that we talked about in the beginning section. We could talk about this phrase in a lot of different ways, of course, but for the most part, it's a, mi it's a major pentatonic phrase, and he's included a couple notes from the minor pentatonic. You can think of some of these additional notes, right? Of course, this is the fourth, the C note. This F right here is the dominant seventh. Third fret on the G string right here would be the minor third. So these are all notes that we've talked about before that are common additions to these scales. Break one done. So in the second break, um, it starts like this. Now it's actually kind of hard to hear that in the recording. You can see Billy's hands doing it though very clearly. After the double bar line, this measure is actually the one that's much easier to hear in the recording. What's happening right here, if you didn't notice, is Bill's using these big horizontal pentatonic ideas. These guys. So we can see he's left out this G root note, but he's still sliding out. Left out a note there, but this is still the same idea, and then... Ah uh, yes, this is definitely moving up using that country system. These slides up and down. See more of our friend the quarter note triplet followed by the eighth note triplet in the next measure. Don't worry about that stuff, right? If you can feel it along to the recording, you'll be okay. Uh, moving on, we have this. So again, this is like a little chord shape. It's like a little, little piece of that chord. This uh, pull off triplet. All of that, I'm sure that you can read. Once again, if you download the tab, you listen to the recording, you can put these things together. Let's look at this bending phrase, though. This is something that's worth talking about. As we bend up, we only want to bend up to the C note. Uh, he bends up, up to that C note. He releases. He plucks the 12th fret note. Now he pre-bends and just releases it down. So once again, he bends up. He kills the note, so it dies while it's bent up. Note ends. Now we just hear 12th fret unbent. And now he pre-bends it up, so he's bent the note up, and I was just gonna release it down. So it sounds like this. 
After that, we get our variation of his closing lick that he's used throughout this tune. So uh, it sounds like this this time. So that ending line is, I think, the most rhythmically interesting uh, figure right here at the end, right? That's, uh, that's definitely something that takes a little bit of finesse to get. So this ending phrase feels like this. You really got to feel that to play it. <laughs> Let's keep moving. So I'm moving on to uh, the third break that Billy plays. Once again, you can see that uh, they're shaking hands, overlapping their breaks a little bit here. And Billy starts this line as another line is going on in the background. But I think you can hear this one a little bit clearer. It sounds like this. Ah, this sounds like his normal lick. lick that we keep seeing variations of. He's given us another variation of it right here. This time he's opening the break with it, which is fine. I have no problem with that. After that, so in the second half of this next measure, we have this. Now this one is a little hard to feel. Once again, we have a rest on beat one, and then we have some 16th notes picking up. So it feels like one E and a three E and one. So let's move on to the next line. Let's see, we have this. Do I even have to talk about it, right? This seems very similar to a phrase that we got early, earlier. The only difference is that it starts with more of a D feel. So this. But then the rest of this line feels very much like the lines that we've seen before, right? So glad that we learned that lick in the beginning. Moving on, next line. This is sort of our standard note choice over C. We see this in every bluegrass break ever. This part's a little interesting. So it's a pull off from three to two, and we get another pick stroke on the open D string. A quick strum followed by the open D string again. And then this, there's our uh, country phrase that I talked about. These are the country chromatic thirds. We normally see these at the end of a line. Billy's coming to the end of a break, that's why he's using it. So in the next line, we can see we've just ended the country thirds. And then we have this big old descending line. You see that I slowed down halfway through. That's because we're changing from 16th notes to 8th notes halfway through this line, um, which makes it a little interesting. So once again. Watch out for that, because you don't want to keep playing this whole line at the same at the same speed as when you started, right? It slows down halfway through. Here's the fourth break. It sounds like this. So I love this. The thing that I was warning you against about straightening out your quarter note triplets, Billy does it on purpose right at the beginning here. So if we look at the uh, first real measure of the break, um, we have this, right? Instead of, right? He's, he's tightened that up so that way it's sort of on the grid, you might say. One, two, and triple, and triple, and triple, and so look out for that, right? You want to make that first one seem a little like, a little punchy and the rest of them feel floaty. This move. We already saw it, it's not too bad. Um, after that, we have uh, a couple beats holding out that uh, double stop, but after that, this is something that I talked about, right? That's a little bit of our D arpeggio. It's nothing too surprising to you, hopefully it's not. Walking down to the C when the C chord happens. And these aren't big surprises, of course, right here. And this is something that we talked about um, that might happen, right? This is the um, the flat fifth, I mentioned that really quickly. Uh, big old G root note up here. That's just a little bit of a luster flat G run. Nothing shocking in this one. This last break is very similar to the first break. It's simple and melodic. Don't overthink it. I can't believe we got through all of that so fast.
Sweet. Let's watch the performance of those four breaks again, this time with the tab up above. If you want, you can try to play along with Billy and I. If it's a little bit fast, you can always go to the settings wheel right there, and you can hit playback speed, and you can slow it down. Anyway, here we go. All right, if you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, there's a couple things you can do. Of course, you can scroll down, you can subscribe to this channel, you can leave me a comment, or you could like this video. I love all those things. You can also check out my website, LessonsWithMarcel.com. Of course, I run a blog there. I also have the tab store with a bunch of awesome arrangements of fiddle tunes. At the very bottom, you can request a transcription of whatever you want, maybe sponsor a video. Of course, I have my merch, a bunch of cool t-shirts, and you can sign up for Skype lessons there, which is awesome. If you wanna hop on a Skype call with me, and talk bluegrass guitar, I'm right here. It's what I do all day. Let's do it. I'll see you guys next Wednesday.